Hi everyone, it's Emily. Today I want to dive into the topic of fashion history and how it's reflected in one of my favorite series on Netflix, Queen's Gambit. I know there have been quite a few bloggers that have talked about fashion history related to the series, so I'd like to add to that and discuss fashion style and design, as well as sustainability and the takeaways that we can learn from Queen's Gambit. So let's get started by covering a couple of key outfits that Beth wears. If you haven't seen the show, Queen's Gambit follows the life of an orphan chess prodigy, Elizabeth Beth Harmon, during her quest to become the world's greatest chess player while struggling with emotional problems, drugs, and alcohol dependency in a male-dominated sport throughout the 1960s. One of the first outfits that Beth wears is her plaid pinafore. And a quick note here, plaid is used several times throughout the series to reflect the chessboard. So in the beginning, Beth is not a super trendy 1960s girl, but throughout the show, we see her use her winnings to upgrade her wardrobe and become more on trend with the times. Her hair changes from a pixie cut with micro bangs, um, when during this time, voluminous hair accessorized with either barrettes or headbands was very much on trend. So we can conclude um, at the beginning that she's not really at the forefront of trends during this time. And we see her hair evolve later in the series to a more Natalie Woods inspired cut. Another look I'd like to mention is when we see Beth very disheveled and headed to a chess match. We actually see this outfit in the beginning and the end and the dress that she's wearing is inspired by Pierre Cardin. Um, Pierre Cardin designed modernist space age aesthetic dresses with wool or thicker fabrics which give dresses the trapeze shape that is very uh, characteristic of the 1960s. Um, the trapeze dress is so timeless and one of my personal favorite looks. Um, Pierre Cardin is also known for his avant-garde style including bubble dresses. He preferred more geometric shapes and motifs that often sort of ignored the female form. And there's a bow at the neck of this dress that conveys femininity which really plays into the theme of Beth being a female amongst many male players. Uh, the dress is a pale green with black accents. Another quick note here, she wears this pale green shade when she's entering the orphanage and also when she plays in some chess matches and it makes her stand out against the dark set. Whereas when she's in the orphanage wearing that color, she really blends in. And that light green color was considered a hospital green during the 60s. It was said to help with a patient's mood. It was often associated with asylums as well, which is sort of um, a play on you know, her mental health. And there's even more symbolism with the contrasting colors on that dress, which mirrors uh, the pills that she was addicted to. The final look that uh, she wears after she wins the final competition in the last scene of the series is an all-white coat, hat, and pant with a dark turtleneck. This look is meant to mirror the white queen chess piece. So this all-white queen ensemble was inspired by Andre Corrège. Many of the coats throughout Queen's Gambit seems to be inspired by Corrège. Um, Andre Corrège also designed Space Age fashion, which coincided with the Apollo space program during this time. The white pants in this scene are also a reference to Corrège, as white suits were one of his many signatures. Um, her white coat is made from a thick cashmere wool with a stand-up collar and three big buttons. I love the tie belt in the back, which kinches the waist, but in the front keeps the A-line silhouette. Beth also wears a black neck, uh, black turtleneck underneath, which hints at the beatnik movement during this time. So the beatnik movement came from post-war years when some Americans began to reject mainstream ideals. They were dissatisfied with their unexciting lifestyle. There's a radical shift that started to spread through art, literature, and music, and it was led largely by influential creative and intellectual types, such as the Beatles. Um, they were inspired by this group of anti-conformist people who had been beaten down by mainstream society. The time period was coined the Beat Generation by American novelist Jack Kerouac. Um, beatniks wore roll necks, uh, wide legs, skinny jeans and striped shirts, black jackets, loafers, and berets.
So the attention to detail and color are so important throughout this series. Um, I've mentioned it a couple times in describing her outfits, but they really tell a story. And although we're talking about fashion history and costume design, we can use these ideas in fashion design and style today. Um, the A-line silhouette, color blocking, the use of basics and neutral colors and high quality fabrics are all elements of Beth's wardrobe throughout the series. And I really love how she's always dressed appropriately. She doesn't show up to her chest matches in Lululemon leggings, which I love, don't get me wrong, they're so comfortable, but she's dressed for the occasion. She wears these stunning wool dresses and she commands the attention of the room. She dresses professionally at times when today we wouldn't necessarily dress up, which is very typical of the 1960s. Um, and she just really exudes confidence. From the series and studying the fashion in it, we can also learn what's considered to be timeless and how valuable timeless looks are. You see her use scarves creatively, she mixes prints, utilizes these long structured coats, um, the shift dresses, the turtlenecks, they all embody class, elegance, and timeless beauty. And many of the outfits that Beth wears could be worn today and they wouldn't be considered outdated. In fact, they're very elegant looks. So from even from the number of people who've enjoyed the costumes from this series, um, we can sort of conclude that the fashion that was popular during this time is something that people would wear today. This information is valuable from a designer's perspective, not only from a business point of view, because of course we want people to, we want to make things that people want to buy, but also from a sustainability perspective. So we should strive to make clothing that lasts, um, not just with the materials but in, in the construction, but also the, the style and the design. Um, you don't want to make something that we wear once and throw out. Can you imagine if, if we continued to make those timeless styles that were worn in the 60s up until today? You could have the same wardrobe for decades and still be considered elegant. That's all I'd like to cover today. Comment below if you'd like me to do more videos and blogs on fashion history and or costume design. Let me know if you have any questions or specific topics you'd like me to cover and subscribe to my channel and click the bell to get notified when I upload new videos every Friday. Thanks guys. I'm also wearing the Olivia top from my spring summer collection. Um, it will be available late May, beginning of June. So there'll be a link in the description for you guys to check it out. Thanks.